Hello students, welcome to the EPG Partshala. I am Dr. Bhashwati Banerjee from School of Biotechnology, Gautam Buddha University. Here we will discuss about the DNA methyl transferases module from the paper Genetic Engineering and Recombinant DNA Technology. We begin with highlighting the importance of DNA methylation and DNA methyl transferases. After that, we outline the mechanism of DNA methylation and the role of DNA, DNA, DNA methyl transferases in CPG sites. In the subsequent section, we focus on the structural and functional aspects of DNA methyl transferases. Finally, the module concludes with a note on applications of DNMTs in genetic engineering. So let us begin with an overview of DNA methylation. We begin with an overview of DNA methylation and then understand its biological implications. Now, what is DNA methylation? As the name suggests, DNA methylation is an event which involves addition of methyl groups to specific sequences or specific nucleotides in the DNA sequence. How is this achieved? This event of DNA methylation is achieved by a special category of DNA modifying enzymes known as the DNA methyl transferases or DNMTs. Now, what are DNA methyl transferases? Let us understand this one part after another. Now, the name DNA methyl transferases is made up of three subparts. First, we let, let's understand what is transferase. All those enzymes which me mediate transference of one side group from a donor to a recipient are, are grouped under the transferase category. Methyl transferases are those enzymes in which case the side group which is being exchanged is a methyl group. So methyl transferases are those enzymes which catalyze the transference of only a methyl group from a donor to the target molecule. Since we are talking about DNA methyl transferase, these are those enzymes in which the target or recipient molecule happens to be a DNA or nucleotide in DNA sequence. Having said that, let us understand from where the methyl group comes. There is a molecule known as S-adenosyl L-methionine. In short, it is called as SAM. This is a molecule which happens to be an in universal methyl donor. For all types of DNA methyl transferases known so far, SAM or S-adenosyl L-methionine happens to be the cofactor and also the methyl donor. So far, three different patterns of DNA methylation has been discovered. The targets of methylation include 5 carbon of cytosine, 4th position nitrogen of cytosine and 6th position nitrogen of adenine. Each type of methylation is mediated by corresponding type of DNA methylase. As you can observe in the diagram, DNA methyl transferase mediates transference of a methyl group from the donor to the target nucleotide. At the same time, the donor gets converted from S-adenosyl L-methionine to S-adenosyl homocysteine. Having understood the basics of DNA methylation, let us now focus on the biological significance and physiological relevance. Let's begin with the basics. Now, all cells in the body of an organism contain the same genome. All the multicellular eukaryotes are made up of from a single zygote. The life begins from the zygote, which in itself is a totipotent cell, which has the ability to produce all sorts, all types of cells required to build the body of the organism. Eventually, all cells derived from the single zygote happen to contain the same genome. However, after a series of differentiation, each cell exhibits its unique behavior, unique physiology, and unique phenotype. Let us understand this with an example. The cardiac cell, which is programmed to beat rhythmically, 
continues its rhythmic movement throughout its life cycle. Whereas a hepatic cell, which is programmed to produce hepatic enzymes, continues to produce hepatic enzymes throughout its life cycle. Never does it happen that the cardiac cell stops its rhythmic movement and starts producing hepatic enzymes. Never does it happen that the neural cells stop producing neurochemical impulses or start producing gastric enzymes. All the cells which have assumed a defined role at the end of differentiation maintain their defined differentiated condition and maintain to exhibit their differentiated behavior. So have you ever wondered what could be the very what could be the reason that all cells in spite of containing the same genome exhibit such a wide range of diversity? Well, let's understand a bit of it. When we look deep into the factors which could be possibly playing a role in creating this diversity, we come to understand that the reason does not lie in the gene sequence, rather it lies just outside or around the gene. That point is known as the epigenome. We must always remember that at no point of time there occurs any modification in the gene sequence contained in the genomes of different cells in the body of the same organism. However, at any point of time, each cell, the genome of each cell behaves in its own pre-programmed, predefined manner and does not switch roles all of a sudden. So what could be the factor? What could be the reason that the gene sequence remaining same, the gene activity or cell behavior changes? Here comes the role of epigenome and all those factors which influence the behavior of genome and eventually the behavior of cell from outside the genome are collectively known as epigenetic factors. All those factors which without changing the gene sequence alter the gene activity are known as epigenetic factors. And so far, three major players have been established which act as the major tools of epigenetics. Out of these, one of the primary tools is DNA methylation, which acts by selectively methylating specific target sequences in DNA while keeping other DNA sequences unmethylated. The other two key other two epigenetic players are histone modification and chromatin remodeling. Both of these are beyond the scope of this module. However, I'll give you a brief description, a brief note. Histone modification involves multiple types of modifications in the histone proteins which are closely associated with eukaryotic DNA. Chromatin remodeling involves changing the shape and structure and accessibility of chromosomes to the DNA modifying or DNA binding enzymes. Let us understand the physiological relevance of DNA methyl transferases. These are the enzymes which catalyze DNA methylation of specific nucleotides in the genomic DNA. These establish and maintain the methylation pattern in the cells. These happen to be one of the most highly conserved enzymes across all life forms. Methylation of DNA specific sites is catalyzed by DNA methyl transferases. Methylation of DNA specific sites in the initial stages are catalyzed by de novo DNA methyl transferases, which initiate, establish and maintain the methylation patterns in genomic DNA. Later on, the methylation patterns are maintained by the maintenance methylase. Both the types of methyl transferases use S-adenosyl L-methionine, also known as SAM, as the universal methyl donor. De novo methyl transferases happen to be the first DNMTs to become functional during the early embryonic development. They induce targeted methylation which results in selective suppression of certain genes prior to the beginning of differentiation pathway. As the cells replicate and progress through differentiation pathway, 
the predefined methylation pattern is maintained by the maintenance methyl transferases here you might be wondering how does the dnmt enzyme know to where exactly the dna must be methylated does the entire gene get methylated the answer is obviously no so where exactly does the methylation occur the simple answer to this query is the cpg sites there are certain stretches in the genomic dna which are predominantly rich in cg dinucleotide repeats and such stretches are termed as cpg sites the p in between cytosine and guanine indicates a phosphodiester linkage directly between c and g thus indicating that these are multiple consecutive tandem repeats of cg dinucleotide pair regions of genomic dna having large frequency of cpg sites is known as cpg island it is the cytosine of cpg sites only which get methylated by dnmts evolutionary studies have revealed that the ancestral genome had more or less unmethylated cpg sites in course of evolution defined patterns of methylation were established and these have gradually evolved into modern genomes we must remember that the gene expression is regulated through methylation of cpg sites associated with nearly 40% of mammalian promoters and nearly 70% of human promoters the cpg sites are the sole targets of methylation for both the de novo and also the maintenance methyl transferases in mammals if you observe this slide you would understand the major biological significance of cpg sites lies in the fact that a gene can be transcribed only when the cpg sites in its promoter are unmethylated methylation of promoter associated cpg sites invariably leads to silencing of genes so let us move on to the key players of the story the structural and functional details of dna methyl transferases we begin with an overview although the dna methyl transferases are highly conserved across all life forms yet the functional implications are somewhat different in eukaryotes and prokaryotes so we shall discuss one after another when we talk about eukaryotic dna methyl transferases we must understand the site of methylation first major dna methylation pattern in mammals includes cpg cytosine methylation at 5 carbon position so far four different dna methyl transferase enzymes are known in mammals which are encoded independently by dnmt1 dnmt3a dnmt3b and dnmt3l genes other methylation patterns sometimes observed in eukaryotes include sixth nitrogen position of adenine or as in case of trna the fifth carbon position of cytosine 38 before we proceed further let us have a snapshot of salient features of mammalian dna methyl transferases all the five cytosine dnmts are highly conserved enzymes but they are encoded independently these are encoded by dnmt1 and dnmt3 and they are made up of two distinct domains the c terminal domain which is mainly involved in catalysis and the n terminal domain which mainly has a regulatory function the important motifs present in the c terminal catalytic domain include a motif for dna targeting and binding a motif for cofactor binding and a significantly dedicated motif for catalysis the c terminal domain has been shown to include 10 conserved amino acids also the n terminal region however is quite variable in nature it may or may not be essential for catalysis whichever the dnmt you consider s adenosyl l methionine is the cofactor for all the dnmts in mammals it is also known as the universal methyl donor for all dnmt mediated methylation let us take the example of human dna methyl transferase family to understand 
the details of domain structures. As you can observe in the diagram, all the five cytosine DNA methyl transferases are highly conserved enzymes with two distinct domains. The domain on the C terminal is exceptionally conserved and is dedicated for catalysis and DNA binding. The domain at the N terminal shows some amount of variability in length, component as well as function. It is mainly involved in regulatory role and may or may not be directly required for catalysis. The cofactor S-adenosyl-L-methionine binds at a specific motif in the C-terminal domain. Let us understand the structure and function of the individual members of eukaryotic DNMT family. We begin with DNMT1, which happens to be the first human DNMT to be characterized. It is also the most abundantly expressed and the largest of all known mammalian DNA methyltransferase enzymes. Domain structure analysis of DNMT1 has shown that it is a 500 amino acid long C terminal, which is dedicated for catalysis and also contains the DNA binding and SAM binding domain. The N terminal regulatory region is large and elaborate with a distinct zinc binding domain and nuclear localization signal. DNA methyltransferase 1 of eukaryotes has special affinity for hemimethylated DNA strands. It is known to be associated with replication fork in eukaryotic cells, specifically catalyzes the meth methylation of CPG cytosine residues only in the non-methylated strand of the newly synthesized hemimethylated DNA. Thus, it maintains the methylation pattern in the newly synthesized daughter strand. Hence, it is also known as maintenance methyltransferase. The next important member of DNMT family of eukaryotes is the DNMT3 subfamily. It includes three related enzymes, DNMT3A, 3B and 3L. Let's have a structural insight into the details of DNMT3A and DNMT3B. Both these enzymes are coded as de novo methyltransferases. Both of these contain a conserved C-terminal catalytic domain similar to that of DNMT1. The N-terminal regulatory domain of DNMT3A and 3B, however, is significantly different. Unlike the N-terminal domain of DNMT1, in case of DNMT3, the N-terminal domain is not essential for catalysis. It is additionally characterized by the PWWP domain and a cysteine-rich PhD domain. Structural analysis has further revealed that DNMT3A and 3B are closely related. They have very similar N-terminal region and exactly conserved C-terminal domain. They only differ slightly in their sizes, DNMT3A being a 103 kilodalton protein and DNMT3B being a 98 kilodalton protein. DNMT3A and 3B are actively activated shortly after embryo implantation. They, these enzymes do not require a hemimethylated strand for executing DNA methylation. In other words, these can initiate and establish primary methylation patterns specifically targeted to the CPG sites of certain genes. In other words, the DNMT3A and 3B function as de novo methyl transferases. The domain structure analysis of the third member of DNMT3 family, that is DNMT3L, reveals that it is lacking the C-terminal catalytic site. Thus, DNMT3L, which is also the smallest known DNMT3 enzyme, does not have a direct catalytic activity and it has a much smaller and non-elaborate N-terminal domain compared to DNMT3A and 3B. The main function of DNMT3L happens to be an accessory or stimulatory enzymatic role. Since it lacks the catalytic site, 
so it also lacks the direct catalytic action. DNMT3L mainly functions as an enzyme which enhances the binding and DNA modeling activity of DNMT3A and DNMT3B. This image is a conceptual summary indicating the discrete and vivid roles of different DNA methyl transferases in eukaryotes. De novo methylation pattern is initially established by DNMT3A and 3B. Both strands are methylated at the CPG sites. Due to semi-conservative nature of DNA replication in the newly synthesized DNA, only one of the two strands, the parental strand, retains previous methylation patterns, while the daughter strand remains unmethylated initially. Immediately after this, DNMT1, which is associated with the replication fork, starts methylating the hemimethylated strand and acts as the maintenance methyl transferase. The immediate implication of DNA methylation is observed when we compare a healthy cell and a tumor cell. Tumorigenesis is controlled by selective and sustained expression of tumor suppressor genes. Thus, the promoter-associated CPG sites must remain unmethylated. Also, selective suppression of oncogenes or anti-apoptotic genes is essential, which is achieved by methylation of promoter-associated CPG sites. Any anomaly in this methylation pattern may lead to a pathological condition. Here we try to depict the role of methylation in regulating a balance between survival and apoptotic pathways in the eukaryotic cell. This was ex experimentally established by inducing apoptosis in a tumor cell upon decitabine mediated demethylation of the tumor suppressor genes. Here we try to synchronize the, the events of methylation in eukaryotic cell and the events of DNA replication in the same cell. As you can see, prior to initiation of DNA replication, de novo methylation is achieved by the activity of DNMT3A, 3B and 3L. During this step, the cytosine of the CPG sites are selectively methylated in a predetermined manner. As the replication begins, DNMT1, which is a maintenance methyl transferase, comes to be associated with the replication fork. As we all know, replication in, of DNA occurs in a semi-conservative manner. When the new DNA strands are synthesized, each new DNA duplex has one parental strand in which the CPG sites remain methylated, while each DNA duplex has one new strand in which the CPG sites are unmethylated. Thus, the newly synthesized DNA duplex has a hemimethylated pattern of CPG methylation. Here comes the role of DNMT1, which is the maintenance methylase. It selectively methylates the hemimethylated CPG sites on the unmethylated strands. Thus, before the next round of replication, and before the subsequent events in the cell cycle, both the DNA strands in the newly synthesized DNA come to get completely methylated at the targeted CPG sites. DNA methyl transferase 2 is the smallest of all known DNA methyl transferases in mammals. However, it is highly conserved and has a conserved C-terminal domain similar to that of the cytosine C5 DNMTs. The N-terminal regulatory region is altogether absent. The DNA methyl transferase 2 has been shown to be an RNA methylase instead of a DNA methylase. It selectively methylates 5 carbon of cytosine 38 residue in the tRNA aspartic acid. Thus, it has been renamed as the tRNA aspartic acid methyl transferase or TRDMT1. 
Having discussed almost everything about the eukaryotic DNA methyltransferases, now we move on to the bacterial DNA methyltransferases. The bacterial DNA methyltransferases are involved not only in epigenetic regulation but a multitude of other activities. DNA stability, DNA topology, DNA damage repair, cell replication cycle, virulence mechanism, survival pathways and so on are a few vital physiological activities which involve a direct or indirect role of DNA methylases in bacteria. One very important cellular activity in bacteria which involves DNA methylases is the prototypical restriction modification system. Let us not forget that the DNA methylation in bacteria also follows the same preset pattern that is C5 methyl cytosine, N4 methyl cytosine and N6 methyl adenine. The bacterial DNA methylases use S adenosyl L methionine also known as Adomet as the methyl donor. Bacterial DNA methyl transferases are classified into two broad types. The orphan or solitary ones which are involved in epigenetic and other regulatory activities. These are not associated with a respective restriction enzyme. The other type of DNA methylases are the restriction modification system associated DNA methylases. These are coupled to a cognate restriction enzyme. One of the most well studied bacterial DNA methylase is the DAM methylase or DNA adenine methylase of E. coli. This methylase selectively methylates the nitrogen at the sixth position of adenine residue and its recognition sequence happens to be GATC. Ecodam, as it is also known, participates in regulation of DNA replication, mismatch repair and transcriptional regulation. Another important and equally well studied bacterial DNA methylase is the CCRM or cell cycle regulated methyl transferase found in Colobacter. This also happens to be an adenine methylase which methylates the sixth position nitrogen of adenine in the GANTC recognition sequence. N stands for any nucleotide. The restriction modification coupled methylase activity is exhibited by a defined set of methyl transferases in bacteria. These DNA methyl transferases which are coupled with the restriction modification system are actively involved in bacterial defense system against the invading bacterial pathogens. Bacterial RM system has actually evolved as a defense mechanism against the foreign nucleic acid, especially the invading phage DNA. The coupled DNA methylases are such that these methylate the recognition sequence in the host genome prior to the expression of restriction endonucleases so that the host genome is protected from self-endonuclease cleavage. But when a foreign nucleic acid invades the bacteria, the restriction enzyme has an upper hand as it is able to reach the invading genome much before the DNA methylases. Thus, a combined action of restriction modification system provides an effective defense to the bacteria against the invading nucleic acid and also against its own endonuclease cleavage. Now that we have gathered sufficient information about the bacterial DNA methylases, you must be wondering as to what could be the relevance of these enzymes at all. Well, these are widely used in re recombinant DNA technology as the DNA modifiers. As these bacterial DNA methylases can induce target specific in vitro methylation. Further, bacterial DNA methylases are an integral part of many vital physiological processes and also a part of the bacterial restriction modification defense system. Thus, these can be explored as targets for drug designing 
and for novel antimicrobial therapeutic strategies. So students, by now we have gathered enough information about DNA methyl transferases, both in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So let's summarize them. To begin with, all DNA methyl transferases are closely associated with fundamental vital processes, be it prokaryote, be it eukaryote, the DNA methyl transferases are associated with epi epigenetic gene regulation, partially with the cell cycle regulation, virulence mechanism, defense and survival, and so on. Selective and targeted DNA methylation leads to silencing or suppression of gene expression. This is a feature which is common both to prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Invariably, whenever the promoter associated CPG sites or methylation targets get methylated, the expression of the corresponding gene invariably gets silenced. It has been observed that drastic variations of DNA methyl transferase expression levels are associated with several pathological conditions, especially carcinogenesis. In human beings, a number of ca cancerous conditions are associated with anomalous expression profiles of DNA methyl transferases. Further, in bacteria, the DNA methyl transferases are involved in bacterial virulence and also they establish bacterial restriction modification systems. As such, the DNA methyl transferases can act as potential targets for genome engineering and molecular therapy. They can be used as targets for drug designing and for designing novel strategies to deal with the pathological conditions.